globe defenders often claim that since the moon appears right side up when viewed from the northern hemisphere, and upside down when viewed from the southern hemisphere, that this is proof positive of a spherical Earth. They believe that observers standing in the southern hemisphere of their spinning ball are literally upside down relative to observers in the north, and that this is the only possible reason the moon could appear inverted when viewed from opposite hemispheres. Anyone can easily debunk this flimsy claim for themselves, however, by simply taping a picture of the moon to their ceiling and viewing it from opposite sides of the room. The moon will appear right side up when viewed from one end of the room, and upside down when viewed from the other. There is no need for the entire room to be spherical, nor for observers to be standing physically upside down relative to one another to explain this simple phenomenon. On the flat earth model, the moon as well as the sun are always located somewhere between the tropics, spending the majority of their time on or near the equator. So just like the picture taped in the middle of the room, people viewing from the north will see the moon appearing right side up, while people viewing from the south will see it appearing upside down. This phenomenon is therefore easily explainable, regardless of whether the observers are assumed to be standing upside down on a ridiculous spinning ball, or right side up on a logical level plane. Deeper investigation into the matter, however, reveals details that definitively determine which one it is. It turns out globe defenders are oversimplifying the reality of the situation when claiming the moon appears inverted in opposite hemispheres because depending where and when you are viewing from, it is actually possible to see the moon at any 360 degrees of inclination. As you can see in the following photographs, the moon does not simply appear either right side up or upside down, but rather appears at all different angles. This is because the moon actually travels over and around the flat earth like a wheel, making approximately one rotation per revolution. So depending where and when the moon is photographed, you will notice the rabbit or the man on the moon at many various inclinations. What you will not see, however, which you would most certainly have to see if the earth and moon were both spheres, is different faces and areas on the moon. In the heliocentric model, they claim the moon is tidally locked to earth, which means that earth's gravity is supposedly so strong that it causes the moon to perfectly synchronize its period of rotation around its axis with that of the earth's, so that we only ever see one face of the moon. Now even if this was true, and the spinning spherical moon somehow perfectly synchronized its rotation with that of the spinning spherical earth, observers viewing the moon from the high northern latitudes, observers viewing from the high southern latitudes, and observers viewing from near the equator should and would necessarily have to see at least slightly different faces and areas of the moon. It is simply not possible that observers viewing from such different angles could all still only see the exact same face. Observers viewing the moon from high northern latitudes would have to see a very different face from observers viewing from the high southern latitudes, and a slightly different face from observers viewing from near the equator. In reality, however, no matter where and when you look, you will only ever see the exact same face of the moon, albeit at various inclinations. This is only possible because the moon is actually a rotating translucent luminous disk and not a spinning spherical terra firma. You can confirm for yourself that both the sun and moon are in fact disks and not spheres by photographing them at different times and placing them in a square grid. If the sun and moon were both actually spheres, no matter where and when they were photographed, they would have to present a perfect circle to the camera, because every face of a sphere necessarily appears circular. If instead the sun and moon are both disks, however, then they should only present a perfect circle when overhead, and the further they recede away from the observer, they should begin to appear slightly more oblong due to the decreased viewing angle. Members of the International Flat Earth Research Society have performed this experiment on several occasions, and encourage skeptical members of the public to do the same, 
as they will find out for themselves which model actually stands up to critical scrutiny.